Question. DS. In the xy plane, does the parabola y equals a times x squared plus b times x plus c intersect with the x axis? Condition 1, b equals negative 2. Condition 2, c is less than 0. Solution. Now we will solve this ds question using the variable approach. ds. Three variables. Question. Condition 1. One equation. Condition 2. One equation. ds question with three variables. Let the original condition in a ds question contain three variables. Now, three variables would generally require three equations to allow us to solve for the variables. We know that each condition would usually give us an equation resulting in a total of two equations, one each from condition 1 and condition 2. However, since we need three equations to match the numbers of variables and equations in the original condition, the unequal number of equations and variables should logically give us an answer E. Let's apply the three steps suggested previously. Follow the first step of the variable approach by modifying and rechecking the original condition and the question. You should always use the same method. That's the beauty of the variable approach. We have to find out whether parabola y equals a times x squared plus b times x plus c intersects with the x-axis on the xy plane. When the parabola intersects the x-axis, y will be 0, and we can modify the equation as a times x squared plus b times x plus c equals 0, which is a quadratic equation. We can use the discriminant b squared minus 4 times ac to determine the nature of the roots in any quadratic equation. Okay. There are three variables in a quadratic equation, a, b, c. That's why the most likely answer is e. Follow the second and third step. From the original condition, we have three variables, a, b, and c. To match the number of variables with the number of equations, we need three equations. Since conditions 1 and 2 will provide one equation each, e would most likely be the answer. Recall three principles and choose E as the most likely answer. Let's take a look at both conditions together. Condition 1 tells us that B equals negative 2, and condition 2 tells us that and C is less than 0. Substituting negative 2 in for B in the discriminant, we get D equals B squared minus 4 times A times C equals negative 2 squared minus 4 times a times c equals 4 minus 4 times a times c. However, we do not know the value of a or c. If we substitute in a equals 1 and c equals negative 1, then we get d equals 4 minus 4 times 1 times negative 1, which equals 4 plus 4 equals 8 is greater than 0. Because the discriminant is positive, the equation has real roots or answers and get yes as an answer. If we substitute in a equals negative 1 and c equals negative 2, then we get d equals 4 minus 4 times negative 1 times negative 2 equals 4 minus 8, which equals negative 4, is less than 0. Because the discriminant is negative, the equation has no real roots or no answers and yes, no as an answer. The answer is not unique, both yes and no, so conditions 1 and 2 combined are not sufficient. Both conditions 1 and 2 together are not sufficient. So E is the correct answer. When there are three variables in the question, it is most likely that E would be the answer. Therefore, always check both the conditions together to save time. Answer E. I did all the calculations here, but you can just choose E as the answer in the actual exam. You do not have to do the calculations during the exam. All right.